Good morning, Crystal Coast. Good morning. Woohoo! We are so glad to be together this morning in the house of the Lord. Hey, if you're watching outside or listening on the radio, on Facebook Live, we are just so thankful that we can all be together. And so, um, thanks for being here. Um, a couple of announcements. Tonight we have a church family meeting. There was an email that went out last night with a link to that, so check your inbox. Make sure you have that. Um, all you got to do is click on the link, um, and you can join us this evening for our church family meeting at 6 o'clock on Zoom, and we'll hear what the Lord has been doing, and we'll hear a little bit about what's coming up, what, what he's leading us to and through. So um, join us at 6 o'clock. Also, next Sunday is August 2nd, and at 4 o'clock, there's going to be a drive through luau for our families to come and drive through and get their buckets full of goodies for Summer Bible Adventure. So listen, those of you adults in the room who have said, what can I do? What can I do? Come on about 3.30. I got a grass skirt for you. All right? And you can help us in just celebrating kicking off what's going to be a great week of summer Bible adventure. Um, it will be virtual. It is going to be exciting. We have lots of good, good things planned, all to glorify God. Spending the week digging into his word. So come and help us next Sunday at 4 o'clock. Get here a little bit early so you can get your grass skirt on, and, um, and we'll kick off the week. Now, I saw Jeanette and John. There they are. Hey, if you young guys are listening, I know some of you, it's early, right? But for those of you that are younger, I want to talk to you just a minute about loving one another. See, this morning I have Pokey and Fox. See this? And they're being a little squeamish because they had a fight this morning. Well, what? Oh, I know. I'm going to tell them. Just be still. So Pokey accidentally poked fox and it made him real mad so you know what he did he showed his big old teeth <sighs> you were not kind were you mm -mm. no you were not it's okay pokey he's sorry but you know we talked about it and we talked about using our self-control even when we're upset right right yeah Okay, and so, so they have promised me that they're going to get along better, and they're going to love one another. See, we had to have a long talk about how, well, Pokey looks a whole lot different than, than my fox friend here, right? Yeah, and, and they respond to things very differently. But even in their responses, they can still show each other love, right? And so you guys are going to do that, right? You're going to control those, those pokey things? Yeah, we sure hope so. So listen, I encourage you today, be listening to Pastor Brad because he's going to be talking about loving one another. And that's what we have to do because that's what God tells us to do. Love one another no matter what situation we're in. You know, it made me think about a few weeks ago, Pastor Kevin talked about, and I even had this conversation with Julie in the car this morning, how we respond to a situation shows where we're at in our relationship with Jesus. It really does. And so got to respond in a way that's pleasing, right? Yeah. So let's be mindful of that. We're ready to uh, worship. So I'm going to go sit down, and I hope you guys have a wonderful morning of worship with the Lord. Thank you, guys. In 1 Corinthians, wow, not 1 Corinthians. Let's try it again. In 2 Corinthians 1.20, it is written, For all the promises of God find their yes in him. That is why it is through him that we utter our amen to God. For his glory. Would you stand with us as we celebrate a God who is always faithful in his promises?
promises are yes and amen. All your promises are yes and amen. seated by the way. Isn't it amazing that we can just trust in God because all of his promises are a yes. This next song, um, we're just going to take time to reflect and pray. Um, for this one, let's just pray that we would be in total surrender to God. And that's what this next song is all about is saying, God, I realize that I have a hard heart. I realize that I am hard person to work with, Lord. I'm not fully surrendering everything to you. So, Lord, help me to surrender. Give me faith that everything that you say is going to come through and will be true. So let's just take time to pray here. you 
to see that you're shaping my life and all I am I serve Just what you say that your good, your love is great. I'm broken inside. I give you my life. I need you. Soften my heart and break me apart. I need you to pierce through the dark and cleanse every part of me. And all I am, I serve. Trust what you say that you're good and your love is great. I'm broken inside, I give you my life. I may be weak, but your spirit's strong in me. Flesh may fail, but my God, you never will. Cause I may be weak, but your spirit's strong in me. My flesh may fail, my God, you never will. So, Lord, as we go throughout our lives, Lord, may we learn to trust you, Lord. You remind us constantly that you are true, that you will not fail us, that all your promises will come through, Lord. So may we just trust in the word that you've given us, Lord, and we patiently and are excited for when you are to come, Lord. So Lord, as we live our lives, may we live it in a way that glorifies you. And it's in your name that we pray these things. Amen. Well, good morning. My name is Brad, and in case you don't know me, I'm one of the pastors here on staff, and excited to be with you this morning. A couple of things that I want to be able to share with you. First of all, in just a little while toward the end of the service, we are going to uh, celebrate communion. If you did not get one of the little communion things, raise your hand real quick. We have some folks who will be glad to bring you one of those. Did everyone get one on the way in? Great. That means we were doing our job this morning. Very good. Okay. Um, so this morning, we're going to have the opportunity, in, like I said, in a little while to, to take part in communion. We do want to mention uh, this afternoon from 2 to 4, there will be a visitation time with the family of Chuck Sutton. It'll be right in here from 2 to 4 this afternoon. And then 4 p.m. this afternoon will be the funeral for Chuck Sutton. So we want to uh, be praying for them today. We want to have an opportunity today to celebrate God's amazing work in a, in a gentleman who just did some incredible things, especially for children. And uh, we just want to be able to celebrate with them today um, his journey into heaven. So we're going to look forward to that. But today we have an opportunity to uh, just get kind of what's been going on in our community, what's been going on in our world. I am a visual person. And so I'm going to use some visuals today. Um, I, it just helps me, and maybe it helps some of you. In the past couple of weeks, we've been on this journey with my family. To uh, we, we actually sold our house, and we moved into a, another home, and it was a fixer-upper. We knew that when we went in. So we sold our house that was in the best shape it had ever been, and it was perfect, and it was livable, and we went into one that was not. And that, 
I'm saying that like it's supposed to make sense, but it doesn't make any sense to a certain degree. And so we've been living out of boxes. And if you've ever done that, many of you have, I know that. Many of you have done this before plenty of times yourselves, but we've been living out of boxes. It explains to, <laughs> my wife said to me the other day, you wore that same thing last week. I've worn the same thing for the last four weeks. I don't know where my clothes are, okay? <laughs> I don't know where, especially my dress clothes. Um, I, I don't even know where they are. They're in a box somewhere. And we had every... Yeah, y'all have done this before. We labeled the top of the boxes. Perfect. We know where all those labels are. We stacked all those boxes on top of each other. So now you go into the room, and they're all in our garage. You go into the garage, you can't find anything. And inevitably, where is it at? On the bottom. I found my shoes yesterday. <laughs> they were on the bottom. Um, so I want to talk about boxes for a little bit. So I'm going to turn my back to you every once in a while, but we're going to grab some boxes. And yes, I am advertising for Lowe's Home Improvement. Okay, go ahead and get that out of the way. This box here, let's call this one Life. Let's call it Life Before March. Okay? And for some of you... This box, and I get this, and I realize this box might have been huge. This box might have been small. This box might have been pocket size. But let's just call this box life before March. And I want you to think back for just a few moments. What was going on? In my family, like I said, we just, we were in the process. We had just found a house that we wanted to purchase. We found that at the end of April. So that's kind of what was going on in our minds. So I can't, okay, God. And I'd love to tell this story sometime, but in another context, what God just opened doors and in an amazing way just answered prayers about this. But life for us at that moment in time was how do we get, how do we transition from one house that we've been in for over 20 years? And my wife tells me I'm a bit of a hoarder. So we've been in for over 20 years. We got all this stuff. And now we have to, we look at it and we go, we got to pack all this. And we had to decide what to keep and what goes. And so life for us was that that moment was a move. Life for us was, a, was getting ready for a move, getting a house ready for, to put up for sale. Among all the other things, with school for our daughter, with um, just keeping up with parents, just, you know, everything that was going on, that was what we were doing. It was called life. It's right in front of that light, by the way. Let's do another box. <clears throat> Let's call this one COVID. Yes, you can say boo. It'll be okay. Everything changed. We'd heard about it a little bit. We had no idea to the extent that this was going to change our lives. If you remember, back in March, we were being told that at some point, probably by the time we get into April, every one of us would know someone who was affected by or had COVID. Well, that didn't really play out in our community that way. It took it a lot longer. Because I remember reading the reports that said possibly by the end of April, maybe three quarters of the United States will have had an effect, some sort of effects of COVID. Now, that was kind of far-reaching, but that was just reality. That, because a lot, you know, a lot of the things that were happening then, people just didn't know. They, didn't, they knew that it was infectious. They knew the spread was going to happen. They knew us as Americans, we can't stand not being around each other. They knew that we were just a breeding ground for something like this. And so we kind of heard the worst case scenarios and everything just kind of kept happening. And COVID became a big deal. And here's what's really un un unfortunate about this. And I'll make light of it, but it's really actually pretty serious. In the annals of time, you've seen pictures along, uh, in the history of the Great Depression. And you can think back right now. You can think of a picture that you've seen in a book or maybe that you've seen in a magazine that showed the Great Depression. When they go back to, in 70 years, when they're looking back at the pandemic called COVID, they're going to see a picture of a Walmart aisle with no toilet paper. 
Now, you think about that. I mean, that was the, that was, it was in the news, it was everything. They literally had armed guards guarding aisles with toilet paper. And this is, this was just a few weeks ago. Let's do another box. Let's call this one, we all like this one, restrictions. COVID changed everything, and all of a sudden, we're told, warned, that we need to make sure that we're six feet apart. Every situation, everything that we do, we make sure that we're six feet apart. Everything we say, everything we do, we need to make sure that we have hand sanitizer. We're cleaning our hands. We are going, and I make light of this, but it's probably true, we are going to be very sick people because we killed every germ in the world now except for COVID. And normally, for those of you, especially my generation, you wanted your kids outside playing so they would get sick, so they build up immunities, so that they wouldn't get sick later. We killed all of that now, maybe. Hand sanitizer. By the way, we bought very smelly hand sanitizer. We know if you t use it in church because it stinks. <laughs> I'm not sure. There should be a warning label. This hand sanitizer does not smell good at all. And now face mask. Some of you have them on, some of you don't. All of us, and I even talk to my friends who are in the medical world, hate them. Now, nobody likes wearing masks all the time. But we're told we need to have a mask on to make sure that we don't spread. And then there's, there's all this information out there about reasons why not to have a mask on. There are reasons to have a mask on. And then we just have restrictions. It's real. And it's a load to carry. <laughs> so we have another one. Box. Let's call this one Confusion. So one of the things that came out of all of this that nobody probably could predict was the unrest that has been happening in a lot of our major cities and even in our smaller ones. All of a sudden, we just got thrown back into a world that seemingly doesn't know how to live together. Now, I'm not saying we did that perfectly by any means. And I'm not saying that some of this stuff doesn't need to be brought to light and dealt with. But we all have seen the news, and we all hurt for the innocent who want to share their story and want to be heard, but yet those who just want to make trouble overshadow them. A lot of confusion going on. Let's talk about another box. I could do this all day. I'm actually going to make myself a podium here in a second, okay? Another box. This one is really getting ready to hit hard. Let's call this one school. Now, many of you in here are going, I don't have to deal with that one. I don't have kids in school anymore. You live in a community that has schools. And guess what school parents just found out? that their children are only going to go to school two days a week. Now, when I was a kid, that would have been heaven, okay? <laughs> two days? You're going to give me three days off? No, you're going to get three days of virtual learning at home. Here's the issue, and a lot of you have already been thinking through this and and we're thinking through this as a staff and trying to figure out how can we help because all of a sudden you've got two parents who work and they're being told that their child, I'm not talking about middle school or high school that could possibly stay home by themselves, but their elementary age children are going to be home three days a week. And they're trying to figure out, do I keep my job? Or do I and stay home with my children? Or do I have to figure out a way for my kids not to be home alone? This one's going to be painful because what ends up happening to some of these is they're going to have to choose. And they're going to have to choose 
for the safety of their children. And so they're going to give, some of them will probably give up their jobs. Some of the, and then all of a sudden it becomes an issue because they were dependent on two incomes. This one, we have not seen all the effects of, but it's coming. And it's going to come fast. Last one. But I do know there's more boxes. Not up here, but in your life. This one let's call church. So glad you're here this morning to worship with us. So glad you're online this morning to worship with us. Many of you have expressed your, your desire to be back together in a worship opportunity like this. We have a lot of others who just desire to be back in a worship opportunity like this, but they just feel like physically they just don't need to do that yet. And the conversations have gone all over the place. There's been many times we've said in meetings and many times we've been together where the, the conversation would turn, well, there's really nothing to worry about. This COVID thing, you know, 99% of the people who get it turn out to be fine. And then it always turns to this phrase and it goes, where we, just, we just need to live on faith. And then you have the other side of the coin where those people who are saying, listen, I know that 99% of the people recover from it, but you need to understand people are dying every single day from this, literally all over the world. So not only to, don't talk to me about not living in fear, talk to me about living with the wisdom that God has given me to understand. He's given me the opportunity to make wise decisions. And both are passionate. And both are right. And as church leaders, we're stuck somewhere in the middle. Because we want to make the right decision. We want to do what God has called us to do. We do not want to forsake the assembly of, the, of God's people. We do want to continue to know that his, his house, his place of worship is holy. We got word to just today or this morning early that a good friend of this church is his church had a they found out it was an active case of COVID in their, in their church, and they had to shut down this morning. Those kinds of things are the things that we hear all the time. Now, these boxes, some of you are carrying one or two of them. Some of you are carrying all of them. It may be something you're carrying. It may be something that you're having to figure out how to climb over. But I do believe the Scripture has given us a response. And it's given us a, a hope that we can get through this, that we can deal with this, and we can be a light in the community as we are working through this. And Kim alluded to it earlier, but we're going to talk about love today. We're going to talk about God's love. So I invite you, if you have your Bible, to turn with me to 1 John 4. 1 John 4, 7 through 11. And we're going to go through this, this passage this morning. And I just hope and pray that God just shows to us how we can be the church that he's called us to be. And it says this, Beloved, let us love one another. For love, <clears throat> excuse me, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who do, does not love does not know God. Because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be, to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. So I have this question that I want to ask. When the world looks at the church do they see a love that can only be explained by the supernatural work of God? Let me say that again. Do they see a love that can only be explained by the supernatural work of God? 
There must be such a love if this text is to make sense, or if this, lo <clears throat> excuse me, if this verse is to be true. He says, he who loves is born of God and knows God. What really matters is a love that can only be explained by the supernatural work of God. That's the love that assures us that we are born of God, and, there, and that's the love that will cause someone or others in this world to see what they are missing, what they are longing for, to see that love and want to know what is it about us that is so different. Matthew 5, 16 says this, in the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Is God's love so shining through us that people realize it's more than us. It's bigger than us. And what should that look like in our lives? And what should that look like in our church? And are we experiencing the love of God so deeply that it spills over into our relationships? A good friend, Jeff Smitherman, many years ago shared a video with me that came out of Texas. And I don't remember all the details about it, but, they, but what I do remember is, is there was a gentleman whose son was on the side of the road and he was changing a flat tire on his truck. And another gentleman pass, was passing by and as we've all done, was fumbling with something in the car and hit the young man who was changing the tire and accidentally killed him. And as horrible as that was, the, the, young, the man that hit the young man wasn't paying attention enough, and he was a little older, and he didn't even realize that he had done it. And he drove on home. Thankfully, when he had done it, his vehicle also kind of hit the other vehicle just a little bit and left enough paint on it that they was realized it was a car, what color car they were looking for. And someone else had seen the car going down the road and knew the gentleman who was driving. So they, they went to the house and they confirmed that, and they saw on the side of the car the dent, and they confirmed that the man had gone down the road and then talking to him, he did tell him he realized he heard a thump, but he didn't know what it was. And as it turned out, when they went back to the father and mother and father to tell them their son had passed, as horrible as that was, one of the first questions they asked was, what about the person who hit him? Well, they found out through all that that it was actually a friend of theirs. Now, what a horrible situation that could have been. But this couple, and it's only because of something like this, a supernatural work of God in their lives, this couple immediately went to console this man. That's the kind of love that the world needs to see. And that's what John is saying here. Being so deeply transformed by the love of God that we live the supernatural love of God out in our lives. Knowing God necessarily results in being a loving person. Usually when we hear that phrase necessarily, it means something in the negative I have to, I hear people talk about all the time about information they found on the internet, and I have to tell them every once in a while, just because you found something on the internet doesn't necessarily mean it's true. Just because you hear something on the news doesn't necessarily mean it's right, or it's true, or even as we're seeing these days, that it even happened doesn't necessarily mean, but here, knowing God necessarily does result in being a loving person. If you could know God and not be loving, then verse 8 would, not, would, be, would be false because it's not possible. Because it says, 
you are, because it says if you are not loving, you do not know God. So one thing is sure, a person who knows God is and will be a loving person. Let that sink in for just a second. A person who knows God is and will be a loving person. Now I get it. All of us show love in different ways. All of us, some people are very affectionate in their love. So other people are very quiet. But look at the heart. Look at the heart. You're going to hear stories, and maybe you have stories about our friend Chuck and the love that he had for children. We saw the evidence of that through many years of work with the children's home. He had a passion and a love for children. He had a love in his heart for these kids. Many of you, I don't know everyone personally, but I know a lot of you, and you have an incredible love for multitude of things, but you have a love for people in your hearts. Right now, some of you are even thinking because your heart is broken because someone in your family has not accepted Jesus, has not given their life in faith to Christ. And you've got a broken heart for that. And I am truly thankful you have a broken heart because that shows and helps you helps you to understand this because of the love that God has in you, that he's doing a great work in your life, and you have a heart for lostness. If our knowing God and being in a relationship with God, if this is true, and it's true that the result of a relationship that is what we become loving people, then why are we told, beloved, let us love one another? We recognize this is a, it's a command. And why do we need to be commanded to do this? Well, 1 Peter 3, 1 23 tells us that since you have been born again, not a perishable seed, but an imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. God is commanding us. God is, is teaching us. So the no, most natural biblical answer to this question is why command a person to love who can't help but love is that God intends to fulfill his promise through the use of commands. The commands are, put in, are part of the food that the Spirit has provided us for the nourishment of our hearts and of, our, uh, of the saints, and our love will thrive in these commands. Do you want to love God more? Then spend more time in His Word and know His commands. Every time I have the opportunity to do some counseling, or maybe even in just conversation, if someone tells me that they're struggling, they're struggling relationships or you're struggling just with life i ask this one simple question tell me about your time with god tell me about that and it, it inevitably it's always the answer well you know just i haven't had time lately there is a direct correlation from happiness to spending time with god and i'm not saying that just spending time with god will make everything go away these boxes are still here, but it will affect your heart. It will affect your heart. The Spirit of God fulfills the promises of God by the use of the Word of God. And in this, we are being molded. We are being shaped. And here's one thing I want a simple reminder, and it's up on the screen. It's become what you are. What is that? Become what God is making you out, making you to be. And that is a loving person who has a passion and who cares for others. Become who you are. And then the next one is God is love. There's so many things. There, that is such a simple but powerful phrase. We teach it to our children. They learn songs about it. They learn all through their, just as children, the one thing we want you to know about God is God is love, and somehow we forget that as adults. But keep the simplicity of that and the understanding. God is love because love is a necessary part of God's nature. 
Love was a necessary part of God's nature from all eternity. Even before there were any people or angels to love, it was what it was about God that made love a necessary part of his nature for all eternity. And here's, one, here's a passage that helps us to understand that. John 17, 24 says this, Father, I desire, this is Jesus talking, I desire that they also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory that you have given me because you love me before the foundation of the world. Jesus so desired to share his love for love of God and God's love of him with us so that we could have a glimpse of what that is like. We could have a glimpse of just seeing that powerful connection of two who can't do anything but love each other. The simplest way that I know to put this is that God is love because of the relationship between God the Father and God the Son is a relationship of love. So why knowing God creates, why knowing that God creates loving people? John 17, 26 concludes this way, and it says this, I am made known to them, I made known to them your name. Now, when he's talking about this, he's talking about the very essence of God. I will continue to make it known that the love for which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. That's the love that God has for us. And as we know, many of you, I know many of you, you've accepted that love that God has given us. You've, you've accepted the gift that God has given us. And you profess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You understand that the Holy Spirit has done and that he's come and he's not only has he convicted us, but he's also given us the opportunity to understand what true love is by indwelling within us. So how does a loving God, how does a loving the Son of God create love for others? Well, verses 9 and 10 said it, said it this way in our passage. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us that God sent his only Son into the world, that we might live through him. And in this love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. The father's delight in the glory of the son was an infinite delight. If Jesus died to bring life to his enemies, can we say with integrity that we love him enough and that we love and that our love for the Father is strong enough that we would not refuse to join him in the mission. Because these boxes are real. And not only are you and I carrying this, but the people in our community who do not know Jesus, the people in our world who do not know Jesus are carrying this as well. And they need to see in loving church they need to see a loving community who doesn't reach out in, in a way of conflict but under but wants to come to them understanding and being able to have a conversation about who jesus is and what he's done for us so that they can know why we have a hope within us and i <clears throat> i pray that this day that you do have that hope in you as well this passage that we looked at today, I, I love this passage, but if you would have read back, one of the problems in not being able to preach through a book is you don't get everything before you get to a passage. And just before this, in 1 John 4, 4, it says, You are from God and have overcome them, for he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. What a strong, strong statement. As I got the chance on Wednesday night to remind them, have overcome. This enemy that is putting all of these boxes and all of this garbage before us, that is distracting us from what we know God is contending for us to do, that enemy is already defeated. So 
So these boxes of life or COVID or confusion, restrictions or school, and even church. Let's not let the enemy get us. Because verse 7 says this, or verse 11 says this, excuse me. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Pray with me today. Father, we come before you. We thank you for the opportunity just to understand and know that there is a lot of things going on. There's a lot of confusion out there. There's a lot of things that are just causing us to focus on so many things and so many other voices instead of yours. So I pray that it, even as this is done in my own heart, that today that your word will cause us to dive back into your word even deeper. Because we want to be the light, with lights and, and sources of light in our community. We want others to know of your love because of what you've done for us. But most of all, we want others to know of your love because the Father loved you so much. So much to develop that perfect relationship. But he also loved us so much that he would sacrifice that love for us. So I pray that this day, if there's one here who cannot say with certainty, I know that I am saved because of what Jesus has done for me, I pray that you would just help them to come to the understanding that they need a Savior, as we all do. And you, Jesus, are our Savior. And that you are the only one who can save us because of your taking our place on the cross. So I pray that you would just give us the confidence to go forward, to help others to know of your love, to be reminded that you loved us and you sent your son to die on a cross for us. And we have the best, best story to tell in the midst of so many things going wrong. So thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing. And it's your name I pray. Amen. This morning we are going to enter into a time of communion. And the passage in Luke tells us this, and he says, if you got your little cup, we're going to open up that top flap very carefully. The passage in Luke tells us, and he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, this is my body, which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then opening up that second part, he said, and likewise, the cup after they had eating, eaten, saying, this cup is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. Father, I can't help but imagine what it was like to be seated at that table, to be with your son, to, under, to see him share in this, but not truly understanding everything that was going on. But now we know. And now we know about the sacrifice that he would become. How was, he would give up his body and shed his blood on a cross for our sins. As we have an opportunity this day to be reminded of what he has done. I pray that you would help us live out daily of the greatest witness that you have given us, and that is your Son, Jesus Christ. And it's your name we pray. Amen.
Well, church, God is grateful. His greatness is grace to us. And uh, thank you so much for being with us. We have an opportunity every time we do communion to remember those in our community. And uh, to be perfectly honest with you, we think that need is going to increase greatly here soon. But uh, we're going to be faithful to God, and we're going to trust Him. I want you to know that you have been such a loving church, and we've said this a few times, that we've had opportunity to do some incredible things in our community uh, because of your faithfulness. So thank you so much. Go love our community like, you, like never before, and thank you for all that you've done. And uh, have a great day. Thank you for being here.